celebrating five years of Sarah's Scraps YouTube channel. There's a whole hop with all different stops from different creative scrapbookers with their own channels. And thanks very, very much for Sarah inviting me. So I hope you'll stop back to her channel and check out everything she does there. Now we're going to create a page with a little inspiration from Sarah Scraps herself. Now, Sarah posted this not all that long ago on her Instagram, which is sarah.scraps, and it's a sketch that she made for a page just to share with you for inspiration. It is what I'm going to use today. It's a single photo page with some layers, definitely up my street, and so I printed this photo from and not very long ago at all. And because it is January, I am using my very first collection with American Crafts. So I had 12 collections with American Crafts and there are 12 months in a year. So I maybe made a slightly informal prom promise that I would share a few extra ideas each month here on YouTube um, with my different collections. So a few ideas with the original first collection just called Chamel this January. And then next month we'll look at the second collection and so on throughout the year. Right, so I've got a single photo and I've got my sketch. Now this sketch has some big strokes along the bottom. And for that, I am going to start with this particular background paper. Now this collection, I pulled out lots of the black and cream, the red, and yellow. There's not a lot of yellow in the collection, but there is some, so that's what I've pulled out because I've got on a Minnie Mouse inspired outfit with my yellow welly boots and a red polka dot skirt and then black everything else. So it seems like a color scheme that Minnie would approve of. And I have this paper here. So this is a B-side to this lovely red, and I want to use that too. It's called Keller, by the way. And um, But this B-side was divided so that you have one-third, two-thirds, really easy composition to use in your page and always have things um, in a nice place. So you can turn it this way and you can compose here. You can turn it this way and compose here. <laughs> you can co turn it this way and work down here. Or you can have it here. But what I want to do is take this and not have it be such a bland background. I want to bring in that color. So first thing I'm going to do is take off the branding strip. It's pink, so I'm not going to use it. Today. So I will put that aside. And then I am going to take off this top section and I'm going to leave black and white. And then I'm going to do that. <laughs> so this then is going to be pieced together to be my 12 by 12 background so that I can put those strokes of whatever this is going to be down here in the black solid well it's got a bit of texture to it but pretty much black uh, bottom third of the layout but I'm going to have that bright red up at the top and then everything is going to fall on that join because I have all these layers and they're going to be building right in here now to stick this all together I'm just going to flip it over and washi tape the two sides together you can also, of course, just stick it all onto a spare sheet of cardstock. And if you okay, let's look at this bottom section of the sketch. And I have basically three big paint strokes, but I've got them on black. Well, I've already got this white strip that goes across there, so that's kind of a stripey element anyway. And if I didn't want to use any mixed media, then I could just go ahead and leave that. But I'm going to try adding a couple different things in here. So one of them is, and um, this scrapbook.com ink pad in metallic frost, which is like sparkly white. And I'm going to load that up on a paintbrush straight from the ink pad. So this is a pigment ink and it may show up on here, but it may not be super duper white. I'm gonna see if it'll give a bit of sparkle. Um, yes. Not hugely super noticeable, but we're getting there. It's building up color. Never tried it on black, so. Brand new ink pad to try this combination. So what I'm thinking then, as that's not super obvious, I'm going to try stamping right over the top of it with the same ink to see 
with a little bit more concentration, we'll give it a different look. And I have in the stamp set from this first collection, this one, which is basically a texture bar. And so I'm going to load that one up with the same ink and stamp right over the top of that to get, yeah, that's a lot more concentrated. Now that's a really kind of just little confetti type look. So I can then stamp that a few times here. Remember there's going to be layers right over this. So I'm not too worried about it being perfect. But I do want some texture here in the black of this background. So stamp that a few times. I think stamp like a pale bit down here. There we go. Okay. So some kind of pearlescent white texture there. Now my other element that I have is a bit more colorful. So this is Liquid Pearls from Ranger in Buttercup, which is like a light yellow. And then I'm going to score this across here and then brush it through. So it's basically a bit like puffy paint, but much nicer. And I'm going to take that right through the middle. There we go. And then I'm going to repeat that right around here. And I'm going to take that same technique there and bring it back over the top. It's kind of like that zigzag effect. So I'm going to brush this one out once and then I'm going to zigzag it back in. And I like this, how that kind of then is mirrored. I'm repeating that same sort of technique that down here I put the color down first with the white ink and then I stamped over the top and here I brushed it out and then squiggle it over the top. Now I may end up wanting to put some back up here at the top as well if I have it, but Sarah does not have it in her sketch. So for right now, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna leave it right here. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside to dry while I do the layering. And I have this photo and these papers. Let's make some layers. Now I want to start with the yellow. one of my favorite yellow or favorite b-sides ever but there's not there's not a lot of it in the collection take it down here on this bottom edge that's going to go there and then there's a few kind of this one is quite a substantial chunky layer out to the right hand side and on here I've got this quite substantial chunky ticket so let's have that bit of red and the joke is not lost on me that I'm putting ticket motifs on a page with a photo where I'm splashing in puddles in the car park of my own house because, or own building, because um, we can't go anywhere. But, you know, we can dream of using tickets. That's what we can do. Then, it's mini, so I want polka dots too. So grab this one, cut a box of this to go behind. Like that. All right, okay, let's add some brown ink to these edges because it's a cream-based collection. So, I mean, there's some pure white in there too, but most everything has this softer cream tone and I like those with brown ink to define the edges. So that's what I'm going to go with. Brown Distress Ink. Now in terms of this collection, obviously this collection is not something you're going to find in stores really. <laughs> so this collection came out in 2014. It was the first collection that I did with American Crafts and, and it's in these collections tend to have about a six month shelf life. So um, it's long gone from the sorts of things that you would find in a scrapbook store right now. You might find um, certain elements that these letters 
the Gold Fitzgerald collection, uh, Gold Fitzgerald thickers are from this collection and they're still available. You can find them at scrapbook.com. You can find them at Michael's too. Um, but then um, the paper elements, you might find a paper pad here or there because they tend to hang around a little longer than the other elements in a collection, but even that's going to be a hard, hard to find item. However, if this collection is something that came out after you start, started scrapbooking or you know you, it just was not on your radar until now, the way I can always suggest is to look at places that people sell older secondhand scrapbooking supplies because they're not using them anymore. And for that, I would suggest Facebook um, groups that do that specialize in, in sharing your stash out and things like that, selling your stash on, or eBay. So you can search for um, just Chamel on eBay or um, Facebook selling group. You can see what you can find. And on Facebook, you can also, you can, some, some groups allow you to, to, to have like a, an in search of post. So you can say that you're looking for a particular collection or a particular designer, any, anybody. And then if anybody has that in their stash and they haven't actively gone out to sell it, but you're, but they have it and they're not using it, then it pops up. Okay, so I've got some layers going on here. Let's have a look at how they're going to work on here, even though this needs to dry. And having, bringing that polka dot down to the bottom is going to give quite a lot more contrast, which I like a lot. So now I want to work on these details over to the side here. Okay, so I pulled out some die cuts, same collection, and different pieces here. And pulled some for colors, some for meaning. I've got another ticket, but it's because it's yellow. <laughs> So I'm going to put that one up here, I think. All right. In fact, I'm going to ink it up and I'm going to break this one in half too. So I can bring this yellow up to the top here. But also, where should it be? under there. That's far enough away with that straight line next to it that I can probably eyeball where it needs to be. I realize there's a certain element of MC Escher there. This one is on top and this one is underneath. <laughs> Don't repeat that if it bothers you, but if you quite like that conundrum, then you can. Um, and I wanted to do something like a clock. There's a few different clocks in this collection, but I think um, using this black black and white one with the black and white design, I don't need this car in, in my design, so let's, let's add that right over the top. Add a couple squares to the back there. And just bring this right over the top of that car. It's going to go straight into the puddle there. And I liked the idea of bringing in a circular element because Sarah's got flowers in this sketch, but I don't. <laughs> I don't really have flower elements. I think this might be the only collection I did that didn't have a significant floral element. Um, so instead, I'm thinking this round element, the Viewmaster slide. Pop this up in that corner there. And this one that says drop down in London town was supposed to be a bit of a travel motif. But I feel like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not leaving London at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere. Can't even go some to the other side of London. So I feel like it, it has a new meaning. So I'm going to put this one in here. I'm just trying to figure out where it might be best. These are very, you know, they're the same color, so we don't really want them right next to each other. So maybe that one comes in later. And I had similar thoughts about this. Um, oh, I don't like that over the polka dot. No. Okay. Let's bring in something that's a little bit of a different color then can bring in this turquoise, which then can um, mix in because it's got the red. So there we go. 
can tuck this one behind here, I think. So lots of, of pieces going in, but everything is squared off at the moment. I'm not doing anything at angles. So then I can play with lots of layers without feeling like, um, like I'm getting dizzy. I don't, I don't want to get dizzy. <laughs> Might leave that one out for now. Okay, and some other kinds of elements. Well, I did these transparency pieces in this collection. Um, and I was wondering about adding that in over to the side. Somehow a sticker has kind of got stuck and doesn't want to come off the back. Can I get it off? I actually don't mind it on because it kind of looks distressed like the rest of the, the piece. Let's put this back onto the background and have a look at where things are going. So I know when you do this sort of mixed media, it looks a little odd before you put other layers on top, but look magically, then it all flows together, just like it does on a sketch. So excellent, 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 excellent. So I'm going to bring this over to about here, and then I'm going to go ahead and stick this down, but I'm just adding my adhesive in this middle section, nothing around the edges, so that I can continue to tuck layers in if I find a spot where I want that to happen. So I've got a little bit of the stamping coming out here and the zigzags and nice and straight across here is my plan. Okay. Have a look at the sketch and what else we can do here. So the title on this one is in this space here, which I think I have some options for. So I've got um, these thickers left, although they don't have a huge number of vowels. But I have O's and I's and U's. I just, I'm just out of A's and E's. Okay, so it's not the end of the world. So I've got those in gold. I've got some tiny little letters too. So the first collection had this set of stickers that came like that um, with phrases and with this gray and cream super simple alpha. So I can use that in this smaller phrase sticker, smaller bit, um, and then do maybe a line in the gold, or let's see, in case, just in case there's any phrase in here that's left, this was the sticker book, but it's harshly used up, <laughs> um, just to see if there's something that would be a good title. Uh, I think spelling it out is probably the better bet. There's not a lot left in here. Okay, yeah. I've got one last thing from this set, which is some um, cork stickers. I don't actually dislike the idea of that one going on there. But I think I like that first idea of the stickers better. So let's have a look at phrases. What have we got here? Or should I spell things out? I kind of like this find a way. Now I know I'm introducing pink then, which I didn't have already, but I think that's okay. So add the brown ink to the edges of that just like I would. Oh, it's a sticker. I don't need to add adhesive. <laughs> Um, right, so if I offset this, so I'm going over that corner of the turquoise, underneath the corner of the clock there, and right across this border here, could I do W, I don't have any R's, no, okay, so I can't do work, um, could I do fun, F, U, N, yes, okay. Find a way to make I'm not going to fit fun on there, or it. I'm not going to fit the it. I want this to say to make it, but it's a little bit. Um, I 
<laughs> hey, 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 could I do, instead of make, you could do find, and could I do joy? Yes, okay, so instead of to make, I'm going to go back, <laughs> reverse, reverse, rewind, and have find joy. Sarah's sketch doesn't actually have a determined place for the journaling and I'm going to move it over to the left because I've got a little bit more room to the left on my page than she has in the original sketch. I've kind of eked everything over to the right a little bit. The other element that I had in the first collection is something that I didn't have in any of my other collections, which was a Project Life set. So it was a mini set that came in a little box like this. So I'm going to use a journaling card from that, but I've chosen one that has square corners on the card, even though the corner, the card itself has rounded corners, so that I can just bring it in a little bit. I want to keep that cream colored edge that matches a bunch of the details that are already on the page, but I'm going to bring it in with square corners and then tuck this into my layers over on the left hand side. That gives me somewhere to write and a place to pull a few different things together. I kind of want that to show this little circle down here. So I'm going to bring this over just about there. And again, I want that squared up, so I'm looking to square that grid against there. It should, in theory, square up nicely. Okay, so then I feel like then I need to kind of take these colors that appear over there and move them over here, include them over here. So I want a little bit of this aqua, a little bit of this yellow with what I've got left. Bring that over here. Okay, this one which has this heart that's embossed on top. No, I don't think that's right for this page. I could use, yeah, let's use the back of this and the front of this. Let's use this little piece right here. It's got both colors on there. So I can cut a box from the fr for the front. And use the other piece with the B side. And then I should be able to have both of those colors all the way over here on the left. Tuck them under here. Just with that little scrap of paper. Bring those up there. Okay, let's have a look at those stamps. Because I'm thinking I could bring in definitely this little arrow. I just want nice, subtle. Um, stamping on the journaling card here because I'm going to write over the top of it. So I'm going to center that arrow in the middle of the journaling circle there. And then this isn't really dried out. I don't re-ink it very often. Um, Distress ink pad, so it has quite a muted chalky finish. Um, and I'm going to repeat that in a couple other places on the page. Just all facing the same direction. So I'm going to bring the arrows down here onto the polka dots. And I'm going to bring it up to the top too. So let's put it in the yellow here. Okay. I've also got a little heart on this set. A heart with a tiny bit of texture on it. So I think I can bring that one into some other pieces. So I've got one there. It's going to be pretty subtle because I'm, I'm thinking that I'll put stuff over the tops of these things and just want it to be a little detail rather than a big, big focus. Um, but I do like to include three, so let's have this one down here. 
There we go. Really subtle. You could totally leave that step out. Um, wouldn't would not be a dramatic change to the page at all, but I do like tiny little bits like that. So sometimes worth worth a little moment to make them happen. Just going to have one last look in case there's any die cuts that kind of spark something for me. In this spot now, get the journaling on, and then I'm done basically. So I didn't end up using this big suitcase. I'm kind of wondering about a smaller element like that, or I could put in the other clock, which might be a little bit more. I actually think I like that better. I've got this round element up here, a round element here, so a nice third round piece. Let's do that. And that one can have a bit of tension. Maybe bring it all the way over here. There we go. Okay, journaling, pretty much done. Now, if memory serves, we did have some super tiny enamel dots in this collection, little tiny heart shapes, but I don't have any of them anymore, which means I don't have any confetti elements from that first collection to put on this. And a page doesn't feel finished to me without confetti elements, so I'm going to use something else. These are just plain gold foil hearts, and they're from my sticker book with American Crafts, the just hashtag sticker book collections. And so I'm going to take these and build little confetti triangles in a few different spots on the page. Well, let's bring this one down further here. So one little grouping there, one grouping down here by the title. Let's bring one there. Here. And one down. And the stamping. And let's go over to this spot, which is a little, a little more plain than the other. One little group over here to the left. I think I'll bring this one down here because the gold looks really nice on the black. So I've got three here, three here, three here. And then I think I'm just going to bring that paint in this this little bit from down there and just do a little squiggly line over the red background here yeah. a little thicker there than I had before actually this all gets tucked under that edge. So I'm going to pull this corner up and brush this back underneath here. There we go. Yep. Let that dry. Okay. And then just having a last look at this design, I've got this aqua that appears here and here. There's a tiny bit of it here, but I kind of wish it was down here. So, do I have any... Oh, I have this. This was the edge that I took off the journaling card. And I could just square up the edges of this and have a little strip of it that I could tuck down in the bottom right here. I do like the layer of the transparency there that I was a little iffy about before, but I like it a lot now. So I'm glad that I added that in. Turquoise there, or the turquoise maybe go going right underneath here. There we go. 
I think that's exactly what it needed. Okay, so that's where I'm going to finish. Thank you so much for joining me for this. And if you're new to my channel and you like what you see, I would love for you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you are normal, regular out, out around here and you enjoyed it, please press the thumbs up, the like, and I hope that you enjoy this. If you do make something inspired by this, tag me and let me know. I would love to see it. And of course, also tag Sarah because she designed the sketch and I just followed along with that first collection. So I hope you enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.